This is 20 time-tested tactics to improve your people skills. Part two. This is tip number five. Show your appreciation. Gratitude is a cousin of affirmation. When someone has expended some effort on your part, even if it's something they're expected to do, let them know that you appreciate it. Make a habit of expressing gratitude. People feel entitled to it, and when it's withheld, resentment fills the vacuum. By contrast, when you express gratitude, you can instantly make that person's day. So thank your spouse for taking out the trash or for doing the dishes, not just for the special things. Thank your employees for their effort, even if it doesn't always produce fruit. Thank the mailman for being so reliable. Then watch their faces brighten. Gratitude costs you nothing, and it gives them so much. Awesome return on investment. Number six, talk about their interests. Try this the next time you're at some stuffy social function. Make a game of it if you'd like. Rather than hoping for opportunities to tell people how great you are, and rather than just making small talk about the five-day forecast, talk about the other person's interests. Set yourself aside for the evening and become interested in those around you. This person is a secretary and a mother? Well, ask about the job and about her kids. That person has a Star Trek shirt. Well, ask about Star Trek. It doesn't matter that you don't really care about Mr. Spock or understand that ear condition of his. That person you're speaking to is a fan. So start there. People love to talk about their interests. So give them the opportunity to do so. By the way, this technique works outside of parties as well. Try it the next time you see that neighbor who's been giving you a hard time. Number seven, remember every name. Some people have an uncanny ability for remembering names. The rest of us find creative ways to hide the fact that we've forgotten them. Hello, friend. Oh, hi there, buddy. Welcome, brother. Great to see you all again. It's been said that someone's name is the sweetest word that person ever hears. So do whatever it takes to make that sweet sound. You'll do more than impress them. You'll make them feel memorable. Number eight, make a sacrifice for them. Words are powerful, but few words will ever be more ingratiating than a sincere sacrifice of time or money. So get in the habit of identifying and meeting people's needs. Be kind. Put their needs ahead of your own. Let the overworked mother drop off her kids at your house for an afternoon and then tell her that you'll take care of returning them. And while you're at it, bring pizza for their dinner. When that mom thanks you lavishly for going out of your way to bring dinner, just say, hey, the pizza place was only an extra mile. She'll get it. Nothing, nothing will earn you more real friends than sacrifice. And if you're evangelically minded, nothing will earn you the right to be heard on important issues like your faith. Tip number nine, use self-depreciating humor. Don't hesitate to make fun of yourself. In a world where people are so full of themselves and incessantly concerned about communicating their own importance, self-depreciating humor can instantly make you attractive. So go ahead, make fun of your flaws. Knock yourself down a few notches. Ironically, it'll probably raise you up in the eyes of others. Number 10, focus on your similarities. Lots of research bears witness to what might already be obvious to you. We're more likely to be influenced by people who are similar to us. If you've been there too, if you've endured their pain, if you look and talk and dress like they do, they'll probably like you more. They'll listen to you more. They'll confide in you more. So center on the similar. Even if you have a scant 1% commonality with somebody at work, focus 100% of your conversation on that commonality when you can. Some people call that the 101% principle. Others call it being as shrewd as a serpent. Number 11, create social relaxation. Now, that has nothing to do with offering your guest an easy chair. It has everything to do with creating an environment where people are relaxed in your presence and feel comfortable talking to you. How do you do that? For the most part, through an amalgam of the practices that we've talked about here. 
smile, compliment them, focus on their needs, express a real interest in them, ease into tougher discussions, warm up to them rather than being so direct, and always show them that you're paying attention by making good eye contact, by nodding your head when you understand what they're saying, by squarely facing them rather than sitting at an angle. Be genuine, transparent, and accepting, even loving, and you'll typically reap the same in return. And tip number 12, talk about your own mistakes while raising theirs. You might be a perfectionist, but you're not perfect. If you want to get somebody to listen to you about mistakes they've made, start by identifying your own. Believe me, they'll certainly listen to that. As you do, you'll make it safer for them to own up to their own faults. This is the end of part two.